Hello everyone, welcome back and welcome new viewers to another tutorial. We are continuing on with our instrument panels. Uh, if you didn't watch the last episode, I recommend that you go back and do that. We'll throw a little thing up in the top corner here for you guys to click on if you need to. Uh, but we just went over some of the basics. We went over switches, gauges, and indicators. Uh, we're setting up our all-in-one and today we're going to continue on and start working on some more advanced stuff for you guys. So let's go ahead, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into the workbench and continue on with this tutorial. Okay, so I believe this is where we left off last time. Uh, we're just set back up here to work on this. Let's go ahead and jump into the microcontroller here, and then we can start setting some things up. Okay, so if you worked with us last time, you'll recognize this setup here. We're just trying to get an all-in-one where we can just plop down an instrument microcontroller, and you don't have to worry about what it is you're doing. You can just come in, add what you need, and everything will be set up for you right here. So we're gonna move on, and we're gonna be doing bar segments today. So let's go ahead and come over here, and we just wanna kinda have some open space to work on. We're gonna need a composite right on off for this. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna plop this down. Uh, we're gonna need to click on it and do some editing to it because we need eight channels here. And all of this will make sense in just a bit. And we'll leave this as default one for now. Uh, if we have to, we can change things up. Uh, so first let's go ahead and connect in our composite signal there. Now we are hooked up. We're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we're gonna to have to grab another thing though. We're gonna need a threshold. And this is gonna help us read the actual numbers that are coming in and give us some sort of indicator. Uh, so we're gonna need eight of those as well. All right, once you got all eight of those, go ahead and connect those in. And we'll just do that like so, clickety-click, and we're all done here. Now for this to understand and read and light up different bar segments, uh, we're gonna have to figure out what zero to one is in a 100% range. So we're gonna have to come in here and put some weird numbers in here. And it's just gonna be small fractions that will allow us to read a signal between a certain number, which will then send on an on signal, which will then indicate on the bar segment because it is, it's acting like a light. And just think about each bar is eight lights that you just have in a row. Uh, and as it gets to a certain point, it will turn that light on and so on and so on. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna come in and we're gonna change some numbers here and get this guy working. Now, this is this is just one way to do this. There are several other ways to do this, but I just wanted to show you this example and hopefully get you started. This is kind of how I learned, so I figured it would help you guys learn this as well. Uh, so on this first one here, our low threshold is gonna be 0.13. Uh, and we're just gonna go down, and we're gonna do this for all of them, do it differently. Uh, this is 0.25, and these are just numbers that I've figured out that work best for trying to figure out percentages. 0.38, 0 0.5, Moving on down, we've got 0.63. We're gonna have 0.75. Let's move this up a little bit. 0.88 and 0.95. Uh, this is the best way that I figured out how to do this. Okay, so now that that's done, we can actually jump over here and we can test this. So let's, uh, first of all, we're gonna save this. We're gonna save it as your AIO. And remember to update it as well. All right, so here we are, we're back into this. So let's go ahead and start messing with instrument panel here. Uh, we're just gonna use the first one because we did set it up as channel one. Um, if it was over here in the corner and you had one, two, three items that were doing something different uh, with just one channels, this would technically be channel four and then you would work through channel four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. But because of the tutorial and we're just trying to make things easy, we're gonna be using this first slot here and it, we're gonna be going through one through eight. We're gonna choose bar segment. We want this to go up. We want on and off and we're doing channel one. And as you can see, we are set up, we are set up right there to do the bar segment. Now, the nice thing about this bar segment is you can also, you can come in here and you can paint this individually. So say you wanted to do something like for a battery or something, you could do red, different color red, get into the oranges, oranges here, maybe a yellow. And we, you know, we'll leave this just so you guys can understand what's going on here. And then, you know, we'll get some greens in here. We'll get a dark green all the way to a lighter green. There we go. So now if this goes down and up, you'll see that, you know, that feels like a, like a battery charge. And we'll just use that as an example. Uh, we're gonna grab a throttle here though. Uh, uh, and this throttle is gonna represent our battery charge going up and down. Zero one is fine there. Uh, we're just gonna have to hook this up and now we need some nodes here. So we'll come back into the microcontroller, edit the microcontroller. We wanna come over to the design area and we're just gonna add some logic to it. And for that, we're just gonna need one. One number here, that's it. It's as simple as that, it's an input, and we'll just say that this would be battery charge, so to speak. 
Uh, so with that, we can come into the logic here and bring this on down. And then all you have to do is connect this to every single one of these. That's all you do. This one number input is going to affect all of these threshold gates. All right, save it, update it, and let's test this thing. You know what would help? It would help if I give it some power. Uh, don't forget to give things power. All right, power, power. All right, so now that that's done, uh, we should have a node here that we can bring our throttle in. We could bring the battery charge in, but it's just going to read full, and you're not going to be able to see how this goes up and down. So that's what the throttle here is representing. Uh, let's spawn this, see what this does. All right, you can see right now there is nothing lit up. Nothing is going on. It's reading zero on the throttle, so that's technically like a zero charge on the battery. But as we go up and throttle, you'll see that the throttle actually is increasing the lights on the bar. So right now, this is a full one signal coming in, so it's reading a full one here. Uh, as the battery goes down, so to speak, the charge would go down all the way until you are reading nothing here. So that's just kind of a cool way that you can use the bar segment there. Uh, I've used this for other things to indicate certain things being on, like missiles attached to a vehicle. Uh, I've got a helicopter that has eight missiles on each side, and as they drop those missiles, the indicator goes off, letting me know how many rounds I have on each side. So there's other ways that you can do things. This is just a quick little simple way to understand how this works. Uh, with, that, with that scenario, you wouldn't need the threshold gates. You just have a signal coming in straight to those on-off signals. Uh, it was a massive microcontroller. Uh, but that's that's how we get this going. So let's jump back in and see if we can do something different here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change this to a, a radial dial. Uh, and you can see we're still colored up here. Uh, uh, and we're going to come in and change our microcontroller as well because there's only seven indicators here instead of the eight. So what we'll do is we'll come in, uh, do it like this, and this can actually be copied. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to paste it. We're going to bring it down. Okay. We're going to feed our composite into our composite. So it's always going to read here. Uh, we're going to lose a channel count here. So we're going to go down to seven here. Let's delete this last guy here. And we can actually leave all these the way they are. They'll still read exactly how we need. And you can always come in and you can tweak these numbers to read how you want to. But this is the best kind of average that I've found that kind of helps you out. Um, so that's all we have to do. Uh, Really, we're just going to add a different signal. This signal would come down here. Uh, so we can disconnect all of this and we'll connect them into here. Simple as that. All right. And now this is our radial segment. Now, the next thing that we can do is actually come help us out here is we're going to go for a property text here. We're just going to plop this down right here and let's copy that and let's put ourselves another one. And all we're going to do is come in here and we're just going to label this as radial dial, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll call this one bar segment. And that's just gonna help us stay organized when we're starting to do a lot of other things going on. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and jump out and test this as well. Remember, we need to save and update. Uh, from here, everything should still be connected, composite connected, always check. Uh, we are connected here to here, power is connected. We are good to go. So let's go ahead and spawn this in and test this out as well. All right, so we're reading zero here, so there's nothing showing up as we start to increase. All right, it wasn't working for some reason, so all I've done is come into the microcontroller and I've switched the composites up from this way, where we went up and over, to down and out this way from the bottom. Uh, I don't know why that's working, but that's that's the way Stormworks is working for us today. Uh, so remember to update, we'll spawn it in, test this, and we can see that the radial dial should start lighting up. Yep, see, there we go. Now we light up, we go up and down, up and down. Better view of this, deep frog over here. You can see it starts going up, goes down, goes up, and it goes down. All right, so that is how you use the radial dial. So the radial dial and the bar summing are very similar to each other, um, other than the fact that there's one less channel to be using on the radial dial. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope this helped you out, you guys. Remember, save, update. Uh, that way you guys can keep this. And we'll be coming back soon with another one, and we'll be doing seven segment display what is it called i don't know uh i can't remember what it's called here the uh the, yeah the seven segment display and that's the one that uses numbers uh that one gets into a, a little bit more complex kind of things here so we'll be doing a whole different tutorial with that but yeah guys i hope this helped you out a whole lot um if it did make sure you throw a like on this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't already uh we got more content coming out and yeah if it did help you out or you think this will help someone else out make sure you share it with them um Get, get people working in Stormworks. I know it's a little bit of a learning curve, so let's help people get over that learning curve. 
But uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I appreciate it, and we'll see you guys in the next one.